Hello everyone, uh, this is Dinesh. So in this session, we'll be discussing about uh, GATE uh, Aerospace 2022 solution. And in this particular session, we'll be discussing about mechanical vibration uh, questions. So if you look into this GATE 2022 paper, there are only two questions from mechanical vibration and uh, each question each question is of two marks so total weightage is four marks so usually in gate aerospace vibration comes to be like in other previous years paper six to eight marks so this time they have asked less and also both the questions are from you know uh, one degree of uh, vibration okay earlier they were asking questions from two degree or from continuous system so let's look into this first question from vibration part they have given a damper with damping coefficient a damper with damping coefficient c is attached to a mass of 5 kg and a spring of stiffness 5 kilo newton per meter as shown in figure the system undergoes under damped oscillations if the ratio of third amplitude to the fourth amplitude of oscillation is 1.5 the value of c so they ask what damping coefficient so this question is from what one degree damped vibration and such question has been asked uh, earlier in earlier paper as well so it is easy question and it came for two marks and it is nat so what is given uh, mass of uh, this object is given 5 kg they also gave the stiffness of a spring which is 5 kilo 5 kilo newton per meter okay so which is like 5000 newton per meter and uh, they also gave the ratio of amplitude third amplitude to fourth amplitude means they gave x third to x fourth okay so we know what is our logarithmic decay in case of uh, uh, under damped uh, vibration okay uh, we know and since it's already told it's oscillatory motion so since motion is oscillatory so it will be under damped okay and uh, we know logarithmic decay is what it is ln of ratio of two successive amplitude so it is like x third by ln of x third by x fourth and guys we already know this logarithmic decay is equal to what 2 pi zeta by under root 1 minus zeta square is equal to what ln of x third by x fourth so x third by x fourth is given as how much 1.5 so substitute here ln of 1.5 now we know zeta is a small quantity okay for under damped system so we can write 2 pi zeta approximately equal to ln of 1.5 so from here if you find zeta value which will be comes out to be 0 0.064 what is the zeta value will be coming out 0 0.0645 around okay now guys once you know the zeta uh, we know the ratio of damping coefficient to critically damped coefficient is what zeta for under damped system and, and we know critically damped coefficient cc cc is what we know cc is 2 under root k m so your c damping coefficient which is asked it will be zeta times 2 under root k m 
so zeta is 0. Point, 0. 0.0645 into 2 under root k is given as how much 5000 and uh, um, mass is how much 5 so if you solve this will be coming as 20 uh, c will be coming around 20.3 okay 20.36 newton second per meter okay so it was an easy question and most of the students should not do any mistake in this question okay if you guys are really looking to get best rank now this is very good question and first time this kind of question they ask if you look this question you will get confused how read the question what it is said a uniform a uniform rigid prismatic bar of total mass m is suspended from ceiling by two identical spring as shown in figure let omega 1 and omega 2 be the natural frequency of mode 1 and mode 2 respectively omega 1 is less than omega 2 they told the value of omega 2 by omega 1 so if you look this problem since here it's a prismatic bar okay and if it, it is connected with a spring at the end so in this way it is a continuous system okay it is a continuous system okay because mass is uniformly distributed and at the end boundary condition are spring supported if you see your uh, the standard textbook ss rock okay you will find such boundary condition okay for a beam vibration of beam or vibration of rod at the end springs are connected but if you idealize it as continuous system your natural frequency equations will be very complicated and you may not able to solve easily for omega 1 and omega 2 that's one thing so it should not be considered uh, idealized as a continuous system second some people told it is a two degree no it is not a two degree problem it's a 1d problem and uh, how we can see we have a two different natural frequency so in 1d problem usually uh, we find only always first natural frequency omega one okay but if you see for any object uh, uh, if you take a coordinate okay if it is a x y z coordinate okay there can be three degrees of translational motion as well as three degree of rotational motion rotational three degrees and three will be translational translational 3 rotational 3 so we can have six modes total for a, any body which is freely vibrating now if you see this case so in this case you can have a translational motion okay here your mass will be um, concentrated so you can say uh, like this there is a translational motion in a spring okay like this okay and there can be a rotational motion about this point so it can oscillate like in this way also in second mode okay so if it is disturbed in horizontal uh, in downward direction so it will oscillate in vertical plane and if it is disturbed in this way by some rotation theta so it will have a different natural frequency so you can say your this is your translational mode and this will be your second this is about this is your rotational mode now since this mass is distributed uniformly 
So uh, this is spring and this is spring. Spring one and two are in parallel. Springs are in parallel. So your first mode, if springs are in parallel, parallel, your k equivalent will be two k uh, for um, yes, uh, parallel combination, and your natural frequency omega one will be under root two k by m. Now, if you take the second mode, so in first mode, what we how we have idealized. Since the mass is distributed uniformly, so we can take uh, this as together, and uh, the system was idealized like k equivalent. Okay. Now, in second case, uh, in this case, so our natural frequency is what under root two k by m. Now, let's look. Case two. So in case two, uh, when you have rotational oscillation for this same problem, so how it is? The initially it is given like this. This is k, and this is also k, and this mass is m. And length is L. Now we know it will oscillate about its CG for free vibration. So suppose this is my new position. Okay, this is my new position, and it is disturbed by angle theta. So we know this displacement will be what? It will be L by two theta. Same way, this displacement is also L by two theta. Now this spring is getting compressed, so my spring force will be in opposite direction. Okay, so it is what your spring force. It is K into L by two theta. Now this spring is getting stressed. So your spring force is again in opposite direction. It is k l by two into theta. Now, when it is oscillating in this direction, inertia will be in opposite direction. So it is i theta double dot. Now these spring forces will create again a restoring moment about this point of oscillation. So those restoring moment, if you take. Those will be in the same direction, and it, the, those will be what k l by two theta into l by two. So this is for spring one, and for another spring, since the restoring moment will be same, this is going downward. So this into moment arm l by two will give me anti-clockwise moment, like in, in direction of inertia. Same with this into this moment arm. L by two will give me k l by two theta into l by two. Now, if you write equation of motion, so you have one inertia which is i theta double dot plus k two times k l by two whole square theta, and there is no uh, other. Uh, moment due to any other force. Okay, so uh, what we find here, I theta double dot plus k l square by two theta equal to zero. Now, if you see this equation, your natural frequency, which is for second mode, will be what under root k under root. K L square by two into I. Now we know for rod, what is your I about its centroid mass moment of inertia for rod of length L and mass is distributed uniformly about centroid. 
this value is what m l square by 12 so your omega 2 if you find from this calculation it will be coming as what k l square by 2 upon m l square by 12 so it is come uh, comes out to be 6 under root under root 6 k by m now if you find the ratio omega 2 by omega 1 it is what it is under root 6 k by m upon under root 2 k by m so it is coming as under root 3 so answer is 1.73 so this kind of question they have asked first time in gate aerospace and i have not seen in other previous years paper also either it is gate mechanical or gate axis such questions so it was quite good question so thank you all thank you